Okay. As we so often do, we're going to understand today's new idea in the light of an idea that we met very recently and we're going to build on that foundation. Okay? So when we first introduced the idea of integration, we said you would have an integral, you've got some function and you know what its graph looks like. If you want to compare it to the x-axis, you're interested in an area that is going to start somewhere and it's going to end somewhere based on these x values. How do I describe where it starts and where it ends? What do I do to this? Yeah, Eric. You give it okay, I'm going to put two numbers here, which we call boundaries. So I would say A and B. Now, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this uh, bit of nomenclature before, but these things, boundaries, there's one which is up the top, the ending, and then there's one down the bottom, which is where you start. So we call this the upper boundary or the upper bound. And we call this guy the lower boundary or the lower bound. Now, I want, to, um, I want to get to this question of um, what happens with this when we don't have boundaries. Now, that doesn't make sense in terms of the original definition when you're thinking about, well, how can you have an area if there's no like, end here and end there? Does it just go on forever? For instance, if I said, here's the x squared curve, and I didn't give you a beginning and an end. Right? Then you'd say, well, I don't know, this just sort of goes on forever. It doesn't have a value. Okay? Which is why when you don't supply these boundaries, since there is no definite value to this, you know, it equals 8 or it equals 15 pi or some number, it has no definite value, so we call it an indefinite integral. So as an example, oh no, I'll stay with this color. If I want to talk about indefinite integrals as opposed to definite integrals, okay, what's the comparison? Well, first, they look ever so slightly different in that there are no boundaries. So let's just give an example. Let's go say x dx. Okay, so this is indefinite as compared to, let's put something in here, the integral of x dx from 1 to 2. Okay? So you can see, all right, what's the difference? The difference is that you see boundaries or you don't see boundaries. Okay? Now, let's have a look at this because we know how to do this part. right? What is my next step? What do I have to work out here? I'm going to work out the primitive of the, what's that thing called inside, the thing we're integrating? The integrand. So I'm going to look at the integrand, find its primitive, and because this is a nice easy function, you can tell me straight off what the primitive is. It's x squared on 2. So I put that in big square back brackets for what reason? What am I going to do with this primitive? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do some evaluation and some subtraction. right? With those same boundaries I had before, I'm going to substitute them in, and then I'm going to get some numbers out. Okay, so I mean, this is actually quite easy to do. Let's do it. I'm going to get 4 on 2, take away 1 on 2. So this is 1 and a half. You okay with that? Now, remember how over these past couple of days, I've been trying to get at the very subtle distinction between area and an integral. Area and an integral. Very closely connected, but not identical. So see here, this is an integral. Its value is 1 and a half. Is one and a half an area? The answer is not yet, right? If I wanted an area, I'd need some, um, I need some units. Like, is it one and a half square centimeters, square meters, square kilometers? On the Cartesian plane, you've got no units like that. So you would say, for example, the area is one and a half, and then you'd literally say square units because you don't have centimeters or inches or whatever provided. So whatever units they are. Okay. But please note, the integral itself is just a number. The area has area units on it. Okay. Now, then that brings us over to here. What do we do with this thing if we don't have any boundaries, if we don't get to a number? A definite integral just gives you a value at the end. When we say an indefinite integral, what we really mean is that it's again about that primitive function. Okay. But since I'm not evaluating it, 
Do you remember when we were finding the primitive function earlier on, before you knew there was such a thing as an integral, I said you need to include something extra on the primitive. Do you remember what that was? It was plus c. Why is there a plus c here? Yeah, no. That's a constant. There's a constant, but that leads me to the next question, which is why do I have to put a constant here? Okay, so this constant here could be 1, or negative 8, or 100, and when I differentiate, I'll still come back to x, yes? So this guy here is the primitive. Now, why didn't I include a plus c here? Do you remember the reason I didn't need to include it? Yeah. Yeah, see this step here? There will be a plus c here, plus c there, it'll disappear. It doesn't matter, okay? But now that I'm not doing that subtraction step, now that I'm not doing that evaluation, I have to bring the plus c back. And now at last, since we're in this topic, I can tell you what this thing is actually called. It is called the constant of what processes we just done. Have we just, what process have we just done? This is integration. This is the constant of integration. I couldn't call it that before because you didn't know integration was a thing, but now you do, okay? So, indefinite integral versus a definite integral. Um, a definite integral is just a number. You go through, you crunch it, you subtract, and then you get a value at the end. The indefinite integral is more or less exactly the same thing as the primitive function. It's, in fact, it's another way, like, you'll actually stop hearing about the primitive function. Now that you know what an indefinite integral is, we don't use this idea of primitive function very much once we've got the, the more common way of saying it. Okay? So when you see indefinite integral, or when you see an integral and there are no boundaries, like here, then what you should basically be thinking of is, find the primitive for me. Okay? All right, um, before I move on to the next thing, does anyone have any questions on that so far? That's okay, not too hard. All right, let me make it a quick note about marking. Marking. Because I will inevitably get this question. You might not be thinking of it right now, but sometime in the next nine months you will think of it, and now you will know the answer, all of you, okay? What happens if I don't include the plus c? What happens if I get given an indefinite integral and I don't write plus c on the end? It's a very common error, okay? If you are lucky, nothing will happen because we get that you've done the main thing, which is find the primitive, and that can be quite hard. Th these are easy functions. I've deliberately given you a nice simple one, but some of the um, integrals you get later, they, uh, they take a lot of work, okay? And it'd be a shame, like, oh my goodness, plus c, it's such a little thing on the end, it's not nearly as important as this, okay? but it is still important. Can you take off your student hat for a second and put on your teacher hat? Why do you think it matters that you see your students writing plus c? What difference does it make? Okay, so there's a concept to be understood. Let me push on that a little bit further. What is the concept? I want you to picture two students. One student always puts the plus c, and another one doesn't even know that there is such a thing as plus c and never therefore writes it. What is the different thing that's understood or not understood between these two students? That's a hard question. What do you think? Hmm. Do you want to hazard something, Eric? Isn't it just the fact that there are a bunch of equations that you give the same? I think this is the basic idea. The idea is that when you differentiate something, Right? There is one derivative and only one derivative. Okay? But when you integrate something, there are actually uh, a multiplicity of different primitives. And that is a key concept. That's like a really important conceptual idea. And we're looking for you to articulate that understanding by writing plus c. Okay? Which means that in the final HSC exam, where you'll encounter sort of maybe 8 to 10 on a rough estimate, 8 to 10 indefinite integrals, right? They're not going to ping you for a mark every time you miss plus c, because that would be unfair. It is a small thing. And to lose 8 marks on a plus c, that's a big deal. We don't do that, okay? But there will be a single question in the exam. I can guarantee it. I'll put money down, okay? Where the question, like it'll be an indefinite integral, and it'll look quite simple, but it'll be worth 2 marks. Can you tell me what those 2 marks are for? One for the plus c and one for the One for the primitive and one for the plus c. And you need both of them. Right? And so on that particular question, if you didn't put plus c there, yes, you will lose an entire mark. And we do the same thing in our internal exams. Okay? 
So someone's gonna ask me later on, like, oh, do we gonna lose Mark on this? Well, now you know the answer, okay?